There are two basic image formats that we use for images on the web. The first one is called a bitmapped image, commonly referred to as a raster image. These are the traditional images that we have always used. These are pixel based, meaning they are made up of a series of little square pixels. They are a fixed size and a fixed resolution meaning if you change the width or height from the original to higher or lower, the image will not look good. It will be very blurry. And you can see an example of a bitmap image here. Vector images are now supported in the web page. Vector images are not based on pixels, but based on written instructions. The beauty of a vector image is that they are size and resolution independent. So if we scale them up or scale them down, they will still look good on our web page. There are different file types that we use. The traditional bitmapped file types are the GIF, the JPEG, and the PNG. There are several new file types being introduced. One of them is WebP, and this is a new Google file type. Its aim is to replace the traditional JPEGs. The vector file type that we are now supporting is what's called SVG, Scalable Vector Graphic. So vector images are instructions. They are actually text code that is compiled by the authoring environment and saved. We can also create our own SVG images using an XML language. They are size and resolution independent. Therefore, they load faster. We can easily resize them without losing quality. Another interesting ability is that they can be changed using CSS and JavaScript because CSS and JavaScript is pure text along with the vector image. We have what is called a standalone SVG. This is an image with an SVG extension that was saved from a authoring tool such as Adobe Illustrator. These standalone SVG images cannot be changed using CSS and JavaScript. You will see them commonly used for icons on the web. We can also create SVG images using the XML language. This would be written inline in our HTML code using the SVG HTML element. These images can be changed using CSS and JavaScript. This is an example of an SVG image code. Granted, you would need to understand how to do this. This is a W3C specification, so you can find more information about it on the web. This code is interpreted by the browser and it renders just like a standalone image as we see here. I would like to point out that there are two techniques used as what is called a fallback for older browsers in the event that the browser does not recognize the SVG extension. One approach uses an object tag to reference the SVG image and in between the opening and closing object tags, we place an alternative image. You also can do this using the picture element, which I will cover soon. And again, we have an alternate image for browsers that do not support SVG. When it comes to working with images, we need to learn a little bit about screen resolution and device pixel ratio. In the early days of the web, when we were only developing for the desktop computer, resolution was determined in the pixels in the display monitor. 
So for an example, a monitor that was 920 across by 1080 height would have the 920 by 1080 resolution. And they would typically use a device ratio of 72 pixels or 96 pixels. That was pretty much standard. In today's world, our devices have gotten smaller and larger, and the resolution has changed. Therefore, when we start working with images on smaller or larger devices, we need to take into consideration the device pixel ratio of that device. The ratio of the physical resolution and what is called the logical resolution of that device is what gives us the device pixel ratio. So for an example, if the physical resolution was 960 by 640, which is typical of some phones, and the logical resolution was 480 by 320, we would have a device pixel ratio of two. And by logical, I mean the resolution that the device is actually using to display the content. So on the traditional desktop, a 200 pixel image might look great, but that same image on a smaller device might be too small, or on a larger device might really be too small, because these devices have different device pixel ratios. This is important because we are working in an area where we have these different devices and therefore we need to make our images what are called responsive. So we have this concept called responsive web design. So responsive web design is the ability for the web page layout and other characteristics of the web page to respond to that device. This is accomplished using CSS media queries. So we can change the layout, the content, the image size, and also we might want to change the device pixel density of an image based on the device that we are using. There are several ways in HTML that we can work with responsive images. One way is to use the source set attribute. In this example, we are targeting the image based on the screen resolution. The source set attribute of the image tag is relatively new. However, it is widely supported. If you wanted to target the screen resolution, you would use what is called the X descriptor. The X descriptor specifies the device pixel ratio that we are targeting. And what this does, it will tell the browser to select the image based on the screen resolution as opposed to the screen size. So in our image code here, we see we have two values and they are comma separated for two different images. After the name and path of the first image, we have a space and then two X. That is the X descriptor. That is telling the browser that if this device has a device pixel ratio of two to use this image. After the comma, we have another path and the image file name followed by a space and then a three X. That is telling the browser that if this device has a device pixel ratio of three, to use this image. Notice the source in our image tag. That is our default. So if we do not have a device pixel ratio of two or three, we will use the default value of the source attribute of our image tag. Again, this is targeting screen resolution using the source set attribute. I'd like to talk a little bit about mobile devices. A mobile device has two viewports. A desktop computer or monitor has one viewport, and that is the size of that screen, the resolution, and it is the same regardless of whether we're referring to it as a physical or visual viewport. Mobile devices have two viewports. The physical viewport is the actual physical screen size, 
The visual viewport is the internal layout size. Phones are developed to have a very high visual viewport in the event that they're not optimized for mobile. However, as developers, we want the visual viewport to match the physical viewport. That is accomplished with this meta tag. I'm just trying to explain that we can target for the screen size in addition to the resolution. So we can use the source set attribute to create a responsive image that is targeted for the device width, which we just established in the previous slide. So we have the ability to specify a list of images for the browser to choose from based on the W descriptor as opposed to the X descriptor. The W descriptor is for the width of the device. So it's telling the browser to select the image based on a screen size that is specified. In addition to the source set attribute, we also have a size attribute. The size attribute is measured in VW units, which stands for viewport width. This gives the browser a general idea of the size so that it does not download all of the images at once. So here we see the code that we would use for using source set and sizes in order to target an image for a device based on the device width. So in our image tag, we have the source attribute, which is our default image that will load in the event that none of the others apply. The source set attribute is targeting four different images here. We have the name of the image followed by a space and then the W descriptor, and they are all comma separated. So the first image will be loaded at a 480 pixel width. The second image will be loaded at a 960 pixel width. The third at 1280, the fourth at 2400. Notice that's a pretty big screen size. Now, notice the sizes. It is saying 100 VW, viewport width, which means that this image is probably a banner image, and we want it to be 100%. That 100 essentially means percent. So if we think that it, we want it to be 100%, we tell it. If we want to think we want it to be 80%, we would say 80 VM. So it gives the browser a better understanding of what we want this image to do or how much we want it to fill up. So it downloads not all of them, but the more appropriate image. In the second example, which is almost identical, we have a media query built in. And based on that media query, we are telling it that we either want 100 viewport width or 70 viewport width. And we also have a default in the size here of 240, which obviously would be for the phone. The picture element, another relatively new HTML tag, and it is used also in responsive design. The picture element has a more semantic meaning. It is used for art direction. What do we mean by art direction? It is more of a conceptual semantic use, meaning that we are going to change the actual graphic. We're changing because it's going to look better. We're not changing because we need it to be bigger or smaller. So for source set, we're using the same image, it's only a different size. We want to keep that same image for all of our devices. For picture, we're going to change the image based on our different devices. The picture element is, is a wrapper for the source and image element. So the source and image element are child elements of the parent picture. Again, they're for loading a completely different image that better fits the context based on the screen size. And the source element uses the media attribute. So here we see an example of some code using the picture element. And you see that we have two source elements and one image. The image is our default that will load in the event that either of those first source element media queries are not matched. 
So we use the, a media query in here, and then following that media query, we have the source set telling us which image to use based on that media query. In the example, you see that the image being used on the desktop, if you notice where the text is, it is a little bit different than the image on the iPad, which is, again, different from the image on the iPhone. So here we want to actually load a different image. They're all similar, but they are different. They're not just bigger or smaller because they fit the context a little better. And this is called art direction.